It's a nasty truth, but those who seek to inflict harm are not phased by gun control laws. I happen to know this from personal experience. The Constitution does not say that government shall decree the right to keep and bear arms. The Constitution says the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. This is what a grassroots effort looks like. Welcome to another installment of the Connecticut Gun Bench. Today's video is brought to you by PAN Firearms, LLC. PAN Firearms, your NRA certification and multifaceted gun training. You can reach us at 203-300-6343 or use our website at www.panfirearmsllc.com. As always, there'll be a link in the description box below. And if you like channel-like content and what I do here, you can support me with the link. Everything is appreciated. PSA, Connecticut residents, if you plan on getting a Connecticut pistol permit, Please get the training done before July 2024 because then after that it gets longer, harder, and more expensive to disincentivize you from going out and get your permit in order to purchase a firearm. If you have your permit, watch it expiration date. Don't let it expire. There is a link for the online renewal process in the description box. Keep an eye on that. Let's talk about this. Now, not too long ago, I want to say a week or so, I talked about Virginia. And the Virginia Democrats flexing their new authority because they have a slim majority in their government and they're pushing for an assault weapons ban throughout the state. Now they did this before and the response was amazing. Absolutely amazing. Well, we're going to come to Enrico County in Virginia and the local government there was trying to basically ban firearms from a number of different places. And once again, grassroots effort, they basically, gun owners in that county, shut it down. I'm coming to here. Virginia gun owners shut down county gun ban. Okay. Now, recently in Henrico County, the Board of Supervisors was scheduled to consider banning firearms, ammunition, and other firearm-related components from any buildings owned or used by Henrico County. The new ordinance would also extend to buildings owned or used by entities created or controlled by the county, including community and recreation centers, basically making gun-free zones, shooting galleries is what they're doing. The new policy was created in the intention of excluding all citizens, including those with concealed carry permits. The ordinance would exempt private security personnel if the county specifically hires them if approved. It would also exclude military personnel only when acting the capacity of their military duties. Once again, you're creating, the Constitution does not have a clause for creating specific classes of people who can exercise a right. It says, we the people. It's everybody. So this exemption of, well, if you're an armed security guard that we approve of, you're good. If you're a military person who's doing in the actions of their actual duties, you're good. Police officer, you're good. The average citizen, no, 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 that's not going to work. That's not how the Constitution works. It's actually an affront and an offense to the Constitution when you create special classes like that. But fortunately, but not surprisingly, the Virginia Citizens Defense League recognized this as a clear violation of the Second Amendment and a dangerous policy that would make people unarmed and helpless in several locations of Enrico County. Okay, we'll come down. BCDL put out the call requesting a strong turnout to stop the ordinance from passing and going into effect. They also expressed the need to flood the Board of Supervisors' emails and telephones with comments opposing the new gun ban. Did they get the response they wanted? Boy, did they ever. The response far exceeded expectations and the county backed down. The ordinance was immediately pulled from the agenda, reminding everyone how powerful grassroots movements can be. VCL their President Philip Van Cleve said, the board announced that due to the large volume of calls and emails, the county manager needed time to study all those comments. Could this come up again in the future? Absolutely. Absolutely. These things never go away. Possibly, we just don't know, but we will be watching. Which means when they finally get tip the balance in the power, that's when they'll pull it off. That's basically what they always do. These things never go away. When they suggest something, it will keep turning up year after year after year. Connecticut is a perfect example of that. Laws that we have now were just suggestions years ago. Now they're law. Like you can only buy three guns a month. That's been floating around 
for over that's been around for over a decade. Now it's law. That's how they work. They wait for the right moment to strike, and usually they strike when they have what they believe the power base to do it. I'll give you an example, and this should worry Connecticut residents if you weren't paying attention. 2019, during the governor's race, Lamont, during a debate with Stefanowski, said he wanted to take all so-called assault weapons. All. He wanted to remove all of them. Registered, unregistered, didn't care. Now, Democrats, Democrats, Democrats said, whoa, 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 mm, a number of them, not all, because some of them are on board with that kind of nonsense. Some of them said, no, 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 let's back up here. You're getting a little bit too extreme. But notice, it's just something that he's talking about now. But I guarantee you, as time goes on, it's going to be a bigger call for removal of all so-called assault weapons in the state. He's going to keep pushing it. Because that's what he wants. It's obvious that's what he wants. All this registration nonsense is basically exactly that. Registration to know where they are. So when he tries to pull a stunt of taking all of them, he, they know where they are. That's exactly what they're talking about here. That's the danger in these things. Now, this was just in out there in Virginia, was just basically firearms in certain buildings. But I show you that this thing will never go away. You're going to hear about this again and again and again, different counties, but they're waiting for the right balance of power to pull it off. That's what's going on here in Connecticut when it comes to these so-called assault weapons. At some point, he's going to try to push to remove all of them, to have all of them either removed from the state or taken away. That's what he wants. If he could have it his way, there'd be no concealed carry permits. He already kind of made that clear in his last... Uh, in one of his speeches, that he has a problem with people having carry permits. Um, it was Ronald Reagan, it was Governor Ronald Reagan, who said, why in God's name are people carrying loaded weapons on public streets? His point of view changed over time. But it's just a reminder that as the world changes, we got to change every day. But kudos to the people out there in Virginia. Good for you. That's what a grassroots effort looks like. And when they first suggested an assault weapons ban, I remember seeing the pictures of that turnout at the, the state capitol. Well, they're pushing it again. So hopefully you're going to be on the ball again and come out just as strong, if not stronger. But congratulations, Enrico County. You overturned a, a, a ridiculous law that's not going to make anyone safer. Good for you. Now keep that momentum going. Let me know what you think. As always, you can leave your comments in the comment section below. And as always, any statements of violence or statements that lead to violence will be removed. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you're notified the next time a video goes live. I will see you on the next one. Peace.